All right. So we've got a little map of downtown Austin here. Yeah. So we're going to answer some questions about this map. You all ready for this? All right. The first question is, what do 7th, 15th Street, and MLK all have in common? So yeah, how are these streets, uh, what do they have in common? 7th, 15th, and MLK. So let's take a look at these real quick. Yes, here's 7th. Here's 15th. And what was the other one? MLK. So yeah, a couple of y'all have already answered this, but now that you see them highlighted on here, what do you notice about those three streets? They're all parallel, right? So this is how downtown's mostly organized, is with these parallel and perpendicular streets. So today we're going to focus on the parallel ones. So yeah, they're all parallel. They are all parallel. So let's think about how we could model these streets with equations. So if we're going to write these in slope-intercept form, for instance, what we need is the slope of the line and the y-intercept. Now, if we can't figure out what the y-intercept is, or maybe it's a decimal or something, then we might have to use point-slope form to do that. So let's start with 15th Street. All right, we've got that highlighted already. It's right there. So um, it looks like, well, the y-intercept's going to be a uh, a decimal here, so we might have to use point slope form. So what would be a coordinate on here that is like smack dab in the middle of 15th Street? Do you see any points there that we could use? Five, five, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five is kind of above 15th Street. Four, five? Four, five. Okay, so that's like right there. Yeah. And we can even find another point. We might need to do that to find the slope, right? Here's another one that's like pretty close to the middle. So if these two points are on the line, then what can we say the slope is? Well, if I go up one over three, I'll be going the wrong direction. Yeah, negative one third. So we know that the slope here is negative one third. And then this point is 4 comma 5. So I'm just going to make a little note here that my point is 4 comma 5 and my slope is, what do we say, negative 1 third? Yep. So I can write this equation. It looks like point slope is going to be the way to go here because the y intercept is going to end up being a fraction. So we've got y minus 5 equals negative 1 third times x minus 4. Let's find an equation that models 7th Street. So 7th Street. Um, again, it looks like you know the y-intercept here is going to be a, a decimal. We're going to have to go with point-slope form again. Um, we've got a couple points we could use here. This one's probably the best one, I think. Uh, or, or I guess you could do this one or this one over here. But if we're going to use negative 1, negative 1 as our point, we also need to think about the slope. So if we use this point, what's the slope of that line? Down 1 over 3. Down 1 over 3. So yeah, the slope is going to be negative 1 third again, and the point is negative 1, negative 1. I'm going to make a little note of that. Negative 1, negative 1, the slope is negative 1 third. So our equation is going to be y plus 1 equals negative 1 third times x plus 1. Now, we're going to do one more. We're going to do MLK Boulevard as well. But what do you notice so far about these two equations that we just wrote? Same slope, Same slope right? So why do you think that is? Because they're parallel, right. So that's going to be the key takeaway from today. And as we go through all of this, like that's, I'm going to keep referring back to that, is that parallel lines have the same slope. That's, if, you, if you remember nothing from today except for that one thing, you'll be good. Okay? So just remember that parallel lines have the same slope.
So let's take a look at MLK Boulevard. All right, again, we're gonna have to go with point slope form on this. This y-intercept is unfortunately, looks like a fraction. But we've got a point like here and here that are you know, kind of close enough to being on the, on the street. And so what, what's the slope of that one? Negative one third, again. And so uh, we gotta pick a point here, let's say two comma one, two, three, four, five, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So two comma nine is gonna be my coordinate. The slope, again, is negative one-third. So my equation is going to be y minus 9 equals negative one-third times x minus 2. And like we, we already talked about this, it says what do these equations have in common? We've kind of already noticed it. They're parallel, right? But the equations all have the same slope. So they have the same slope. They're all parallel. All right, let's take a look at Guadalupe and Lavaca and write equations for those. So Guadalupe and Lavaca. Let's see, where's Guadalupe here? It's going to be right here. Oh, that's going to be nice. That's, this one will probably be able to do in slope in. Oh, so yeah, slope intercept form. So there's Guadalupe. Where's Lavaca? Oh, here it is. This this one right here. Right? All right. So notice that those are parallel as well. So what should we expect from their equations? They should have the same slope. Now both of these have y-intercepts that are that are pretty easy to identify. So we could let's go with slope-intercept form on this one. Um, so we'll start with Guadalupe, has a y-intercept of 1, 2, 3, 4. And what's the slope here? Here's another point. So if I'm going from here to here, 3, up 3 over 1, right? And the y-intercept is 4. So for Guadalupe, we have y equals... 3x plus 4, and for Lavaca, we have y equals, uh, let's see, what was that? Uh, the y-intercept's 2, so 3x plus 2. So what would be some other streets that have the same slope as these two streets? So here's Guadalupe and Lavaca. What streets would have the same slope? There's a, you have a lot of choices here. Colorado, give me one more. Rio Grande, Congress. Yeah, all of these, right? All the ones that are like almost going north south. Like, I know it's a little crooked, but. Um, so, yeah, Colorado and Congress are two good streets. You only need to write two of them. It says Joe is driving down Guadalupe and Jennifer is driving down Lavaca. So they're both driving down the same street, or not the same street, but they're both driving down these two streets. And it says, uh, why are they never going to intersect? Yeah, the two, the two streets are parallel. So there's really two things you need to know about parallel lines. Number one is they never intersect. And number two is they have the same slope. Okay, so parallel lines never intersect, they have the same slope. Any questions so far? So it says write an equation that can model second street. What's the domain and range of this function? Okay, so this is gonna be a little trickier. So second street, where is second street? Second street's right down here. Okay, so just to kind of keep this a little simple, I'm going to say that second straight ends here and I guess like right here. So we're going to have to kind of estimate these Oops. for the domain and range here. But let's first write the equation. 
We know the slope, because we already know the slope of all those west-east streets is going to be negative one-third. Uh, but we need a point here. So let's use like this point right here, this negative two, negative five. So negative two, negative five is going to be the point we're going to use. And the slope is negative one-third. So our equation is going to be y plus five equals negative one-third times x plus two. It says, what's the domain and range of this uh, function? Well, if we look at that street, it doesn't like, go on forever, right? Like it ends on the left side and the right side. So if we're think, trying to think about the domain and range here, um, like how far to the left does it go? And let's, let's just, for, to make this just a little simpler, let's round to the nearest whole number, okay? So how far to the left does Second Street go? Negative four, yeah. And then how far to the right? To the nearest whole number. Two. Okay, so the domain would be negative four to two. So negative four is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to two. And then for the range, we're going to go bottom to the top. So how low does it go? Again, we'll round to the nearest whole number. So like down here. So negative six, all the way up to negative four, roughly. So my range is going to be negative six. And these are estimates to negative four. It says, which street can be modeled using the function negative one-third x minus two? Well, because the slope is negative one-third, like which type of road are we looking for? Like one that's going west-east or one that's going north-south? Yeah, what the west-east, right? And then it's got a y-intercept of negative two, so that's going to be where we want to look. Okay, so negative one, negative two, going west-east with a slope of negative one-third. That's going to be good old Sixth Street. Yeah. So let's look for this 7, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, right here. So what street are we looking at? Thirty-five. Thirty-five, all right. I thirty-five. Okay. So this is going to be a little intro to the kind of project you guys are going to do at the end of this unit. Okay, you're going to be, have to do with streets and naming functions and that kind of thing. All right, so let's talk about parallel lines. Two lines in the same plane are parallel if they never intersect. Non-vertical lines are parallel if and only if they have the same slope. So, vertical lines are always parallel. Okay, if you've got vertical lines, obviously they're always going to be parallel, even though they don't have a slope, right? Okay, so just as a quick reminder here, slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b, and point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We're going to need those for later. So these are the kinds of questions I'm going to be asking you on your homework and that will be on your quiz on Monday. Determine which of these are parallel. Okay, so we're looking to find out which ones are parallel. So we're trying to figure out, do these have the same slope or not? So what's the slope of 1A? One-third. That one's the easiest one. Okay, so I'm going to make a little note of what that slope is. Now B and C are not going to be as obvious. We're going to try to put them into slope-intercept form so we can identify the slope as easy as we did 1a. So for 1b, we need to add 2x to both sides. And that'll be 3y equals 
2x plus 9. And then how do we get this in a slope intercept form? What's going to be, like, what do we still need to do here? Divide everything by 3. And we've got to divide every term by 3. So we get y equals 2 thirds x plus 3. So what's the slope of this line? 2 thirds. So is A parallel to B? No, they are not parallel. Because why not? They have different slopes. Okay, so I'm going to keep hammering that idea about they got to have the same slope to be parallel. Letter C. We need to add x to both sides, which should give me 3y equals x plus 6, and then divide by 3 to give me y equals 1 third x plus 2. What's the slope here? 1 third. So which two lines are parallel? C and A. All right. Let's see, are these lines parallel? It, it kind of looks like them, right? But we don't know for sure until we check what? What do we need to check? The slopes. Okay, so let's see, the slope of A, down one over one, two, three, four, five. So this would be negative one fifth is the slope. For this one, this one goes down one over four. And C goes down 1 over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what I, what I caution you here is uh, that just because they kind of look parallel doesn't mean they actually are. You have to check the slopes, right? So which ones are parallel here? A and C are parallel. Okay. Even though it looks like B might be, it's not. This will eventually intersect the two other lines, like way out here. All right, number three. It says line A passes through negative 5, 3, and uh, negative 6, negative 1. Line B passes through 3, negative 2, and 2, 7. Are the lines parallel? Yeah, tell me about it. All right, so we've got to find the slopes. So let's, let's talk about line A. So change in Y is going to be negative 4. Change in X is negative 1. So this reduces to positive 4. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right, so let's find the slope for line B. Change in Y is going to be minus 5. Already I'm hugely suspicious that this is going to work because th this bottom number is going to be hard to make this 4, right? So for the change in x, we get minus 1, so we get 5. So are they parallel? No. Guys, we're almost done here. we got three more problems. Write an equation in slope-intercept form that passes through... 5, negative 4, let's just right off the bat plot that point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 4. And is parallel to the line y equals 2x plus 3. So our slope is 2, so we're going to go up 2 over 1. Now we still need to write the equation, but luckily we have the point and the slope, so we can write this in point-slope form. Then we'll get it to slope-intercept form in a minute, but y plus 4 equals 2 times x minus 5. So now I said I'd ask the same question over and over again. Here's a different question for y'all. Okay, so how do I get this in a slope-intercept form? What's, what do I have to do first? Yes, sir. Wait, 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 wait. You add 2? What, what do you do? You multiply it. Multiply mm -hmm. Yeah, but we need to distribute, so we also got to multiply it by the negative 5. Right. All right, very good. That's what I'm talking about here. Okay, so y plus 4 equals 2x minus 10. And we're almost there. Just one more step. What's my last step? Oh, that's just a sloppy equal sign. My bad. My bad. Yeah, that was just sloppy handwriting. Yes, sir. You may. 
Subtract 4 on both sides, right? So I get y equals 2x minus 14, and that's my equation. Slope-intercept form. We started with point-slope form, we took it to, to, to slope-intercept form. Number 5. Same thing, basically doing the same thing here. Okay, it's got to pass through negative 4, 2, so I'm going to go ahead and plot that. Negative 4, 2 is right here. And the slope has got to be parallel to this line. Y equals 1 fourth X plus 1. So, Lila, what's the slope got to be? Um, one, fourth. 1 fourth. That's Okay, great. Up 1 over 4. And look, in this case, since we can see the, the Y-intercept, we don't have to go through all this algebra to figure out what the Y-intercept is. We can just look at it visually. What's the Y-intercept here? 3, right? So we could just write the equation. Y equals 1 fourth X plus 3. You could go through that, that whole point slope slope intercept stuff, but if you can actually see the Y intercept, you don't need to do that. All right. Well, one last question to kind of get you thinking about what this project's going to be all like. Parks and Recreation Department is uh, constructing a new bike path. The path needs to be parallel to the railroad tracks and pass through the point 4, 5. Write an equation that represents the path. Okay, so if it's got to be parallel to this, what's got to be the same? The slope. the slope. Okay, so let's find the slope here. From 8, 0 to 11, 4, I go up 1, 2, 3, plus 3, and then over, uh, th wait a minute. Did I miscount that? One, two, that's plus four. My bad. And then over one, two, three. So what's the slope? Four over three. Okay, we got this point right here. Like, so we can kind of we kind of get an idea of where this path is gonna go. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. Doesn't look like the y intercept's gonna be super obvious. And it doesn't even say that we need to put it in a slope-intercept form, so let's just go point-slope and just be done. Um, so y minus 5 equals 4 thirds times x minus 4. Yes, sir? You may.